if things were going according to a plan, I wouldn't be standing here. I would be actually making beautiful furniture, you know, leaning over a drawing board, working a lot with my hands, you know, using a lot of robust machinery. Unfortunately, there was a very sudden and unexpected change to my plan. Because I couldn't paint, I couldn't draw well enough, I failed my school entrance exam. So basically, there was nothing left for me to do but to go to the university. How about you? Have you experienced life-changing plans? No? Multiple, yeah. And a lot of people. So, important question is, how we deal uh, with the, this type of change? How can we handle it uh, better? Change is ubiquitous. We have uh, distinguished speakers today. They will be speaking about change, transformative change, gradual change, different types of change. In my career, uh, in, uh, if I get the machine working, and I can uh, get the presentation up, uh, in my career uh, in top leadership teams in different organizations, uh, sorry, yes, um, I have experienced dramatic change, catastrophic change. So I have been in the position to tackle it, to prepare for it, uh, and, and go through it and do a lot of recovery planning for it. So this dramatic and catastrophic change I will be referring to as crisis, for con to be concise. The, interest, the industries that I mentioned, you know, that they are chemical, uh, retail, uh, aviation, there are also a number of international organizations that I have helped, like the United Nations. Uh, there are national organizations, like the state audit offices. Uh, most recently, uh, there are also the military and defense, uh, quite obviously, because, of, because they are classified, the pictures are not up on the screen. Uh, and, and these organizations, um, they do their best uh, to prepare for a crisis. Because instead of asking a question, if there is a crisis, they actually know all too well. They have to focus on when there is a crisis. So what they do, uh, and where I help, well, they invest heavily in, in, in building up their resilience. So they invest heavily in what you call well, three pillars, risk management, emergency response, and uh, recovery planning. So what we can take away from that experience that has been built over actually decades and centuries in, in this area, um, can we learn from actually their, their approach to crisis? How can that actually help us in our daily lives? Actually, in, 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 in your, or your organization, your university, and even your family. So we asked the question, are these organizations actually um, perfect in dealing with the crisis? What do you think? Are they good? Yeah. They'll still make mistakes. And I also, I as a, as a professional in, in this area, I also still, I keep doing mistakes. Organizations keep doing mistakes, and that's, that's because of several reasons, you know. The, the reasons might be, you know, shift in focus, lack of resources to deal with this preparedness and resilience building. Uh, actually, that might be also, like, more mundane reasons, like change in their staff, change in personnel, so, uh, and, and consequently, the change in focus. But what I have... What I have uh, experienced being part of these, you know, crisis leadership teams and top, top um, uh, senior management teams and organizations, you know, there, there, there is one approach uh, uh, that helps. 
both these organizations, me personally, and also a lot of other people uh, who are dealing with, with this type of dramatic catastrophic change. Uh, that's, that's, that is actually something uh, that is actually uh, th that you wouldn't call complicated. What is the opposite of uh, complicated, overcomplicated? Simple, undercomplicated? No? No, it's simple, yes. So simple approach works best. So, and for this reason, I have actually, uh, I have put up this five-step approach that will help to deal with any type of crisis, be it organizational, be it personal, be it your family crisis. Um, so these five very simple steps, uh, and this is something that helps in, in every crisis. So first step, uh, what you need to do if, 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 if a crisis unfolds, is create a very simple response plan, maximum one page, you know, few bullet points. How are you going to overcome the situation at hand? What is the focus on that plan? The focus is on people, people who are affected by the situation. If you focus on that, then even intuitively, you will be good. The other thing in that, in that first step is what, what to consider, you consider the most pessimistic scenario. You know, use your imagination, you know. Go really down and dark. So, so what is the worst that can happen? And if your plan, your simple plan, addresses that very pessimistic scenario, uh, again, you'll be good. Second thing, team. Who are the people uh, who will help to deal with the situation at hand? Or who will be the people who will implement that the plan that you have created, devised in the first step? So in case of an organization, ideally, these are people who, are, who have been trained, who have been trained years in advance, not months in advance, years in advance, and who will be uh, dealing with, that, with, with the situation uh, at hand. So these, as I said, these can be colleagues in a university environment. These can be volunteers who are part of a crisis team. Um, uh, so these can be your fellow students, you know, fellow teachers. Uh, and in case of a personal crisis, this can be f family members or friends. Third thing, communication channel or communication platform. Sounds extremely easy, isn't it? So if you cannot meet, you meet in one place, right? Which is that place? So you can ask your university colleagues, you know, if you have a massive catastrophic event, which room exactly out of these, in these many rooms in this area right here, or other outbuildings, which is the place where you meet, which has been, you know, where you have had mobilization trainings, activa activation trainings that you go to, where you meet, where you open up your crisis manual and you start dealing with the situation. I have had a Recently, uh, uh, one of the companies that, that asked me for advice, they also had um, a catastrophic event, a blast, and, and, uh, and, and they lost you know, a bit of time while they agreed you know, which place they meet. You know, shall we meet in my office or we meet in, 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 the, in another office 500 meters down the road? You know, and that's where you lose minutes. And I'll tell a little bit later why it's important. So, so it can be a room. It can also be a video conferencing platform, but then which one? You know, Zoom, Teams, you know, WhatsApp calling, you know. Can it, be a, can it be a messaging platform? Yes, there is a messaging platform as well used, but then which one, you know? Because while you agree on a single communication platform, it takes time. So it's best pre-agreed. Fourth thing, resources. 
as a rule of thumb, every crisis requires resources, be it financial, material, time resources, you know, human resources. Um, so set these aside. Ideally, if you have set them aside early on, if not, then make sure you have resources, you know, earmarked for your particular crisis. And the fifth thing, and the fifth thing I love, you know, that's the, the long-term thing, the end game. So that's recovery plan or business continuity plan. So where do you want to go in long term? Yeah. Um, I have two, two, two good, or not two, three, four, five, many good examples where, where organizations that I've had a, a privilege to be dealing with, uh, where they really use the crisis to actually to, to make a step change, to go to the next level. For example, one of our laboratories who actually faced the COVID pandemic, so they had to step up testing by 80% uh, over, basically overnight. So what was their response? They said, okay, we had long wanted to invest into technology. Yeah? So instead of recruiting multiple doctors, laboratory doctors who do manual work, you know, look into the microscope. What they did, they said, they, re they, they, they said, we go into technology, we buy the latest, and we use artifi artificial intelligence to, de to do most of the routine, uh, uh, boring work for us. And then we use the, we, we involve the doctors, you know, the high ranking experts, only in very complicated cases. So they used their crisis as a springboard to go into the next level for their business. So they are totally different organization. Another organization that we had just completed the, the crisis planning for uh, in, in Ulaina. So they are using their new philosophy, new approach, actually to shift their focus from Eastern markets into the Western markets. Um, so because they had this idea, and when the, the markets changed now, because of the invasion in Ukraine, they said, okay, we, we sh shift our business entirely. So that's the fifth thing, so the, the end game. Another concept that I want to share, and that I'm a big fan of, and, and and had an opportunity to test and try multiple times, is the act early concept. The, the act early concept actually is, is quite a paradox. And this is typical of every single crisis. As crisis unfolds, you have very little information available about, you know, what happened, why it happened, what are the people directly affected, you know, how it's going to go. So that's the darker triangle, you know, the information, you know, the tip of the triangle. So there's very little information available in the very beginning. And I, as time elapses, and as, you know, Th th there's more information becoming available. But the paradox is there are fewer effective things that you can do as time passes by. What do you think? Why is that? Any ideas? Why do you have fewer options as the crisis passes, you know, as the time passes? Yeah, the damage has been done. You cannot undo it. That's it. You cannot turn the time back. But the thing is, different people and organizations, they see how you respond to crisis. You cannot undo the crisis. You know? uh, but a lot, a, a, a lot 
is dependent on how you react to it. If you don't act and you don't make decisions, there are other people, other organizations coming into the play. So they will become, so let's say, focus of attention. They will be those that are seen as, as acting or reacting. There are authorities, you know, there, is, there are investigation bodies, there are your competitors, there is the government, there is your customers. They will all act. And if you fail to act, so you lose momentum. So that's the paradox. You have more information, but there is less sense, less use for it. So the act early thing. So, and to conclude, um, I would like to dwell a little bit on on how you can how you can use this experience built in these various industries. You know, it's, and it's built over the decades, as I mentioned. What you what what you and we'll, what we all can do, we can start with the baby steps. You know. Uh, we can take these five points, uh, we can take this act early concept and, and, and start dealing with small changes. And when there is something big coming, so the big challenge, you will be ready. So you can get prepared, you can do drills or training. And um, for example, if your university has a crisis team, you can actually volunteer to take part in it. So, and then you will be, you will be ready for a dramatic or catastrophic change. Well, in the very end, uh, back to my uh, carpenter story or the furniture story. So, luckily, I have found a type of craftsmanship in what I do when responding to crisis and being part of the top leadership teams in, in these organizations. So uh, I have found I can use attention to detail. Um, I can use discipline, do planning. Uh, I can still continuously improve my performance. And, and um, yeah, that is what this crisis preparedness helps to develop. And even if I find myself that I, you know, not, that I, not always I like change, I can still enjoy the results that the change brings. So, and it all helps to create a better or a more, let's say, even more resilient version of myself. And uh, yes, it brings the, the enjoyment for the change that we have achieved. And uh, to conclude this, I would like to ask you a question. Are you yourself ready for a change? Are you? So then we can give yourself a round of applause. And I have saved time in this presentation. So I actually promised <laughs> I have promised I will not be making pictures, but uh, because we have ample time left, so we can, you, you know, we can all make a change now. We can maybe stand up for a while, can we? Yeah? Okay. We have, we still have time. Stand up, move a little bit, yeah? And maybe then, uh, what can we do? We can for probably warm up the place for the next speaker, Thales. Maybe we can give him, you know, wonders, big, big applause, can we? And I'll make a selfie. Yay. Thank you.